In today's video, we are going to be talking about different ways to gate reverbs inside of Bitwig Studio. This is the little loop we're gonna be working with. And we're gonna put a gated reverb onto the snare clap layer, okay? And a gated reverb is really just a way of cutting off a lengthy reverb tail so that it maybe fits and grooves a little bit better with the track that you're working on. In the digital domain, there are a lot of reverb plugins where super fast decay times still sound really good. And so you may not need to use this technique depending on what you know, plugins you're using or whatever, it's the same kind of effect, but with certain plugins and with real actual spaces, you're not as lucky. You can't like adjust the decay time on a, on a large hall, right? If you're actually recording something live, in which case you kind of have to use a gate to control the sound or go in with um, volume automation. Either way, we'll start with the most classic. So we're gonna use this drums group and I'm gonna enter into the group so that I can put an effect track that exists just inside this group so that when I go back out and look at my project, I'm not seeing a lot of stuff going on down here. Um, this is just the way that I work. Usually I always limit myself if there are any uh, true like return channels here. Those return channels are just gonna be a gluing reverb or a gluing delay. Otherwise, anything that's specific to parts, I put inside of the groups just for organization, just so I don't get confused. It's a little bit easier for me to work that way. So we'll call this gated verb. Okay, let's go back inside the drums group for now. And again, we'll listen back. And I need to send some of the snare and the clap in, and we can just send the whole thing in. So right now it's gonna just be very, very loud. I'll just adjust. Right. And this is where we're going to put our reverb. We'll put our reverb 100% wet and then mix in that reverb with the original signal that's playing out on the group track. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and let's start by picking a reverb plugin. That's the first thing we need to do. And I'm going to use the tall reverb four in this example because this one doesn't actually have a decay time. What adjusts the decay time is the size parameter. And when we listen to this and we'll turn the dry all the way down, the wet all the way up, we're gonna hear how it really just doesn't work. Like that sounds pretty good. That does not. Okay, so we want more of this sound but cutting off much, much sooner, all right? And the first way to do that is just the classic method, which is going to be using a gate. So we'll grab our gate. And right now the gate is listening to the device input, which in this case is the reverb. So if we try to do this technique, we're gonna get actually more of like an artifacty kind of special effect. which I mean sounds cool in its own right, um, but that's not what we're going for here. So instead we need to side chain in the actual snare or clap, okay? That's what's gonna actually allow us to then shape this envelope properly because there is no tail on that. So the gate is gonna like that message a lot better. So we'll go in here to the drums and we're gonna grab our chains and we'll just do snare pre, just because that way if I go back later and I'm adjusting things with my volume control, this should then stay pretty consistent. So we go snare pre. Let's start to add some in. You can see exactly what's happening. It's silent, the snare hits, it comes up, it fades out according to our attack and release. So if I wanna let a little bit more of the original transient through, I can bring up the attack. Try to find something that sounds good and then adjust the release. It's just a matter of playing with what you have in your reverb controls to really dial in the sound and make sure it sounds good. The one thing you wouldn't necessarily want to touch though here is the size parameter. Okay, so diffusion, messing with the modulation, even messing with the pre-delay is gonna be okay, but we just don't want to play with size. This is the sort of thing that we'd actually have to almost solo this to really hear what the modulation is doing.
I may not want any of it. And now let's bring it back in and see how that sounds. Okay, so without the gate. And then with the gate. So that's method one. Method number two is gonna to be to use the Dynamics device. It's gonna be essentially the exact same effect, only with the Dynamics device, we have control over the knee. So it's going to curve out the decay a little bit more if you want it to do that. This is actually typically the way that I do gating reverbs if I ever need to do it. Um, honestly, most of the time, I just use plugins where with really fast decay times, it, it still sounds okay. You can get this exact same effect, but um, let's go ahead and mess with the dynamics now. Again, we're gonna have to set that sidechain input, so just so you guys can see the way that this works. So something like that is actually pretty cool. Again, we can get special effects if we set the attack and release time at different values. Something like that's actually kind of cool to me if you were in that sort of uh, you know experimental mindset. But let's go in and let's do exactly what we did before. And we'll go to the drum machine. We'll go to our chains, our snare pre. That's really carving it up. Almost barely even hear a difference. So that's even kind of cool. But I'll show you the way I normally do it. So I normally adjust the knee control a little bit so we get a little more of a curving. And this is typically the way that I usually set it up because you can see the shape of that. And then just blend to taste. Something like that's kind of cool. Yep. To me, that sounds very nice. And now the last method that we can use is taking advantage of our modulators. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to convert this into a hybrid track. All right, and then I'm going to be adding notes because those notes are what's actually gonna be triggering this. So it doesn't matter where I put the notes. So I just have to make sure I put them in the right place. All right, good. That's where our clap, is, uh, clap and snare is hitting. And then we'll just go in here and just loop it over the whole duration since that's the pattern the entire time. You could always copy this down and then just delete the notes that are hitting um, when you know the snare's not hitting or whatever. All right, so now we're gonna go in here, we're gonna use a tool device just to control our gain. And then inside the tool device, I'm going to be using the four stage, okay? And then I'm going to route this to amplitude and let's get it so it goes all the way down to the bottom there. And right away, let's listen to this effect. So it's actually pulling it in both ways, which is kind of cool. Silence is when this is going to be all the way up. So I'm going to move all of these up first and now slowly start to bring it in. Okay. And now the nice thing is we have control over the curve. Lot of really unique and cool things with this. Maybe even have it come back up just a little bit. So yeah, a lot of control over this right here.
So yeah, lots and lots of options for you here. Typically, I use the Dynamics device. Um, I think the four stage is interesting if you're doing something a little more experimental and you really want to make the volume kind of jump all over the place and use all four of those stages, you can absolutely do that if you want to. Um, so again, totally up to you. Just some stuff I thought I would show you guys today. And uh, yeah, hopefully you can take advantage of that in your own music. Thanks for watching. Take care.